Politically, Scotland's been a bit of a madhouse these past few years. As a country, the state of our discourse leaves much to be desired. And while culturally and politically a little division is a healthy thing, ensuring, as it does, that differing ideas and perspectives are not silenced from these immensely important discussions about our collective future, and that we further avoid the echo chamber which would otherwise arise in its absence. Too much division is catastrophic. In an attempt to address this growing problem, this imminent problem, my guest today is Alex Cole Hamilton. He's a candidate for the Liberal Democrat Party, and he's running as a member of the Scottish Parliament for Edinburgh Western. I immensely enjoyed our discussion, and that discussion is what follows. I hope you enjoy it. Alex Cole Hamilton, you're running for elected office. Um, please summarise your platform and tell us a little about yourself. Okay, well, I uh, live in the constituency in the village of Blackhall with my wife and three small children. Um, I'm running for election because this is the place where my kids are going to grow up. So I face the problems that local residents do every day. I know what makes this area tick. But on a sort of wider level, I want to get into the Scottish Parliament because for the last 15 years, I've been working for children's charities in Scotland. So I still see on a daily basis how we are failing very vulnerable children and families uh, when we have the tools to make things better for them. And uh, it really frustrates me that politicians lack the political will or vision to take that on. I think it's also um, a, an election unlike any other. I mean, this is, has the potential for the SNP to sweep the board. And if that happens, I think that would be terrible for our democracy because they have in a government, in a parliament, which was never designed for overall control, had a super majority for the last five years. And they have governed us like petulant children. Um, we see routinely good ideas from other parties being voted down because they can't come from the SNP. We see um, the erosion of our civil liberties in terms of the police, in terms of things like stop and search, a criminal ID database. Um, and, and I just think we need strong liberal voices at this time in Scottish politics to stand up and actually be in effective opposition to the Scottish nationalists. And I find it interesting that you, you say that a lot of civil liberties are under threat. Um, Spiked Online, which is a media company, uh, recently conducted a nationwide analysis of censorship on university campuses. And Edinburgh did not score well in this, neither did quite a few of the other universities, um, with similar kind of stuff that's gone in the last couple of years about the kind of where our discourse is post-2014. Do you feel the liberal principles such as free speech and expression are under threat? Oh, absolutely. I think it's, uh, it's a very dark time in our democracy. Everyone celebrates the, uh, the political um, conversation that was started by the independence referendum and the fact that lots more people got engaged with politics again when previously they had been more apathetic. That's very true. But at the same time, we see actions by the SNP where they are routinely getting candidates to sign contracts to say that they won't criticise either the leadership or party policy um, on pain of being deselected. And that, I think, is the measure of just a, that kind of controlling um, approach that the SNP take uh, to, to free speech. I think you can see that writ larger in terms of the way that um, universities, um, the governance of universities in general and colleges to a certain degree being shut down by the SNP that they have more um, government control over that um, and across the board um, if you just in, in your in the sort of small local politics level if you criticize anything that is this government is doing you are leapt upon by legions of nationalist shock troops online yes. cybernats who will pounce on you and and try and shut you down and intimidate you from saying that and it is a very difficult time to be uh, an opposition politician in Scotland, but but we're here and we're going to make a fist of it. They're well organised. Uh, I mean, you can when say you mentioned that. the shock troops online, it's <laughs> yeah. it's something that's kind of been in the works for a very long time. Well, I so have I uh, I've been <laughs> under sustained attack um, for the last few weeks on online on Twitter in particular, and I think that's a measure of the fact that um, the SNP are very worried about losing this constituency to us. You know, we came within a few percent of uh, stopping them in May. Yes. Uh, people recognise that we're the main challenges to the SNP. Lots people voting us for the first time to stop them and that is worrying the SNP and you can and as I say you can measure that by the number of hostile tweets I get every day somebody showed me how to use the mute button on Twitter the right, other day which yes. is making, making things a lot more pleasant yes, <laughs> but, exactly. but yeah there's a lot of that 
Yeah, well, I mean, they have the right to say it. You don't need to listen to it. Exactly. So it's, it's not, yeah. yeah. I won't um, block people, though. I, I think, yeah. you know, you've got exactly. to, you've got to exactly. remain open mm-hmm. to, to people to get in touch with you. And uh, and I think that if you shut that down, you're no better than the people that well, exactly. that I've been criticising you. Yeah. I mean, um, around the world at the moment, there, there seems to be a discussion about, as I mentioned, whether liberal principles are not around a threat and being the Liberal Party, formerly yeah. the Liberal Party of the 18th of Gladstone yeah. and of of all these uh, sort of giants of the political yeah. realm. Why do you feel that Scotland broadly and Western Edinburgh specifically need a Liberal Party and a candidate like you could self? Well, you, you kind of said it yourself. I mean, mm. liberalism is so much bigger than the Liberal Democrats. Yes. It's a movement. It's an ideology. So, you know, I've lost count of the number of times that people have told me that the party's finished or that we're extinct. And it's not happened. We've clung yes. on and we've dug in. And, you know, there's every sign that we're going to grow at this election. We need Liberals because... Um, liberals believe that in the sort of power of people and, uh, and individuals and the strength of individuals and that actually we come together, it's important to come together in a society to solve shared problems, common problems, but at the same time that individuals should have every freedom possible, that they, there should be nothing in their way to making the most out of their life in terms of occupation, in terms of social advancement, social mobility, whether that's, you know, um, what postcode you're born in, what income differential you're born in, what sexuality you have. Yes. There should be no artificial barriers to equality or your ability to conduct your private life in the way that you want to. And so we have council area debts, which we've heard quite a bit about and more and more about over the last few months. And then we had the Jarrah's figures, which were published, and there was a lot of, sort of I guess, political hay made out of them. Yeah. We we're talking about a deficit of about £12.5 billion, pounds, which is a bit higher proportionally than the UK's deficit, but yep. not in actual, t- obviously, not in yep. actual cash terms. Who do you think is to blame for this, and how would you, and by extension your party, sure. address this? Yeah, well, I think there's two separate questions there. Firstly, in terms of local authorities, mm. um, the we, we voted against the SNP's budget this year because yes. that brought in an additional £500 million pounds worth of local authority cuts. Yes. Now, that is going to be felt by the most vulnerable people in our society Absolutely. because what happens when local authorities um, have to face cuts, they cut back on services like social care, like... Uh, um, sanitation, like things that people rely on um, to just function on a day-to-day basis in our communities. Now, <coughs> coupled with the fact that we've had count, local authorities haven't been able to raise their own money for the last five years, um, any additional money through the council tax freeze, um, this is a pretty stonking set of cuts. Now, what the Lib Dems want to do about this side of things is actually reverse the cuts, particularly to education, mm-hmm. because I think, you know, I talked about social mobility earlier. The absolute key to social mobility is education. Without it, um, you know, you can find whole chapters of young people to um, economic inactivity, uh, lack of ambition, and, and the rest of it. You give people education, they, you give them a ladder to get to where they want to be. So we want to put an income, uh, an, a penny on income tax across the board um, to invest in local authority education, reversing the education cuts. And we want to do that in three areas. Nursery education, because when you... Um, when you come from a deprived background and you um, you are demonstrably a year behind your peers by the time you leave nursery education, that gap only widens in terms of education attainment as you go through school. So the second point is that we want to bring in a pupil premium, which will allow um, money to follow the the most deprived and vulnerable pupils in our society and finally and most importantly we want to reverse the 152,000 cuts in the college place cuts that yes. the, um, the SMP exactly and I'd like, like to get on to that if you'd like because yeah. um, that's a very interesting issue especially the site hill campus is situated in, yep. in western Edinburgh and uh, as well as Napier's campus, and they sit right next to each other. Um, and we both go there, myself and Gav, who's the sound gent for this particular interview. Um, Hello, Gav. Speaking as students ourselves, so Audit Scotland published this material um, this time last year concerning the state of Scotland's colleges. Lectures are not happy. Uh, their union, the EIS, the Educa- uh, Educational Institute for Scotland's a mouthful, called and executed a nationwide strike several weeks ago, which we were both down at outside the parliament. And we have student numbers falling, apparently, quite dramatically. Uh, Edinburgh colleges as a whole, all yeah. three campuses. But most notably, I think in Glasgow, some of their, I forget which, which one of their merged super colleges has falling student numbers, but it was by a lot, according, I think, to the independent. What's the solution there? Like, how do you solve that? Because there's a lot of things that have been said about there was um, a lot of, not quite corruption, but there was these massive payouts to yeah. the, the former executives of these colleges when the kind of the takeover happened in order to merge them. Yeah. And people aren't happy about the whole situation 
I mean, the, the lecturers definitely aren't happy. Well, I, I think one of the, the biggest sins that the SNP have committed mm. in, in the sort of nine years that they have been in office is mm. presiding over the quiet death of further education in Scotland. Yes. Um, the, I mean, they, they point um, repeatedly to keeping higher education free, but they have done that entirely at the expense of further education. Mm -hmm. So you are finding, and, and let's remember... Cynical move. It's a cynical honest, move. Yes. That, uh, and let's remember that further education is far more important in our society in terms of social mobility yes. than higher education. Mm -hmm. You know, higher education is, is always held up as this big, you know, where everyone wants to get to. Mm -hmm. But that's nonsense, you yes. know. Um, the majority of Scottish pupils actually um, have career paths which are better served by accessing quality further education college places. So we've had, we've seen 152,000 places at further education colleges lost. We have seen mismanagement and payouts as you described in terms of the merger of colleges because they are trying to downsize the FE sector. We want to reverse that. We think the FE sector needs to be the focus of the next parliament. Yes. That it has suffered far too long. It is, it is not a, a route to a quick saving or a quick buck for the finance secretary when he's looking to, to save money. Um, and in fact, that without it, without a strong FE sector, then we are confining countless students or countless would-be students to um, a life of potentially in economic inactivity, um, a lack of social ambition, and, and the many other social, negative social outcomes that come with that. Five years on from the last election, of course, there was an AV referendum. Yeah. Um, and in terms of voting fatigue in this country, ah. if you take the referendums and you include the one in Europe this May yeah. and you include this election yeah. upcoming, you're talking about technically, though, no one really cared about AV for some reason. Because um, <laughs> it was the same day as you Because it was harder to explain. Yes. That, you know, if you can't explain something in a mm. sentence, you lose your audience. Yes. And that was the problem with AV, I think. I, exactly. I mean, I'm still passionately committed to proportional representation. Yes, as am I. We got 24% of the vote in mm -hmm. 2010, but we only got 8% of the seats in the House mm -hmm. of Commons, 92 percent of MPs were not Liberal Democrats exactly. when we should have had 25 percent. And but to my knowledge the Liberal Democrat Party is the only party in British politics which maybe not having it as a, a huge sort of flagship policy but it's the only one that ever talks about federalism as a yeah. solution for a German style or Absolutely. American style federalism Still for a solution to our problems. To but I digress you were going to ask yes. me about voting fatigue. Yes I mean uh, we got three referendums if we yeah. count the AV one and we sort of beef it up and we count this upcoming European one. Yeah. Uh, we have, say, two European parliamentary elections. This is the se second Scottish parliamentary election. We have uh, two general elections. I mean, and the referendum on Scottish independence, yeah. which kind of has taken up a ton of the attention span of think of this country. Do you feel that people in Scotland, more so than the rest of the UK, have sort of voting fatigue to so the constant well, political act? I find it yeah. fun. But I, I can I think, see why other people yeah, would. Yeah, I think there's two schools of thought. Definitely yeah. that we have a lot of elections. Yeah. And then people forget there's also campaigners fatigue. If, yes. you have, if you're on the front line of these, then yes. we have a, something to campaign for every mm. year. You get pretty knackered. <clears throat> um, but I enjoy it. That's what mm. we signed up for. So we love it. Um, I would agree with you to a point. But I think that actually and uh, the independence referendum really lit a spark in people and yes. got an interest in politics. I think we'll see that drop off. Mm -hmm. um, I think people... Um, will start to go back to their sort of usual voting patterns or lack thereof. Um, so I think we're not there yet in terms of voting fatigue. It's possibly coming. Um, but that the, the, the cor corollary to that, the flip side of that, is that actually whilst there has been a massive interest in democracy as a result of mm -hmm. the referendum, there has also been a lot of division as well. We yes. have, uh, it's been reported that one in four people um, say that they have an irreparably damaged relationship with either a friend or family member mm -hmm. because they were either side of the yes-no divide. Mm -hmm. I think that's terrible. And yes. I think that's why two years on after the referendum, we really need to put this to bed mm -hmm. and move on with the business of governing our country. You know, yes. th there is a clear mandate for staying in the United Kingdom. So, so it's time to move on. Yes, I mean, um, nationalism, like anything else, has a tendency to go either way. It can be a very... Uh, benign thing or it yeah. can be quite a, a, a toxic thing and I think with some people I certainly can relate to that uh, one in four yeah. statistic I'm sure you can as yes. well with all your, your yes. some, some of your detractors who we'll Definitely. call them detractors to be <laughs> polite on Twitter um, uh, but a great many people who yeah. I guess are, are also fans so that's uh, um, okay well I mean I could end with this question okay. if you'd like um, okay so you're elected in May we just, we'll just assume it Really? And, and there's a good chance at Edinburgh West because this yeah. is traditionally, as you were saying about uh, Mike Crockett last year, yeah. um, very yeah, so close. Astonishing and and um, it was certainly not the foregone conclusion that the SNP, I think, expected exactly. last year. Um, 
sort of sailing on a wave as they were after yeah. uh, 2014, which we've discussed. And so, so you're elected in May. In five years' time, which of your policies do you reckon Enro Western has benefited most from? If you can make such a prediction, I mean, which one do you think uh, is 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 not being proposed by, yeah. say, your opponents is the easiest to implement and will have the largest effect. So if, we're in your favorite, you if we got if we got to um, yes. Im yes. implement our policies. Yes. But I think, well, absolutely, our flagship policies on education because yes. I, and particularly around FE college places um, because, you know, we have a, a, as a bigger proportion of students, FE students in our constituency as anywhere else. But I would like to see far more. And yes. I think that's by reinstating those 152,000 lost college places. I want to see a, a massive revolution in, in both nursery education and primary school mm -hmm. education so that the attainment gap is a thing of the past. I mean, I think it's incredible, it, just scandalous that we live in 2016 mm -hmm. and in Scotland, you still have this massive gap in exam results based on what postcode you were born in or yes. raised in. That's just an indictment of our system. We ha used to have the best education si system in the Western world, mm. and we're now less than, you know, sort of below average. Yeah. I, I'm just not settled with that. I think we need to get Scotland right back up there. So hopefully, definitely the education side of things. Mm -hmm. uh, you think to an extent that while well, free university is a great thing, it's become not quite yeah. a fad, but it's become something that the, the SNP yeah. particularly will yeah. cling to. I think uh, I think there are a number of things mm. which uh, are, I describe them as dog whistles for the yes. SNP that they say you know that they define themselves based mm. on we are the party of this. People forget it was the Liberal Democrats that actually abolished tuition fees in mm. Scotland in 1999. Yes. Um, but the SNP have sought to cling on to that, and fair enough, you, you know if that's if that's what they believe mm. in. However, that has come at a massive cost, cost to further yes. education. Similarly, there are other sort of dog whistles, which I, I would say have been quite cynical of the SNP in terms of middle class giveaways mm -hmm. over the years. And that, you know, there's a range of things which used to cost you money, which don't anymore. Now, I'm not saying we're going to come in and start charging people for things like prescriptions again. Yes. But the SNP, I think, have made a, a great play of the fact that their big policy wins in this parliament in the last have largely been about stopping you having to pay a certain amount of money for things and you know that's retail politics it's mm -hmm. not it's not very deep it's not very ideologically driven and and the cynical side of me would think you know it's really just designed to win votes i want a government that's there that recognizes the inequalities in our society and takes difficult decisions sometimes unpopular decisions um, to to reverse those inequalities so it's about investing in education it's about you know, taking decisions that don't play, play well in the press, like, for example, increasing the age of criminal responsibility to 12, stopping the stop and search of children and young people on an industrial scale mm -hmm. um, because of the way the police service has been reformed. Yes. Um, these aren't necessarily going to play well in the tabloid press, but you know what? Um, mm -hmm. I don't really care. We don't play well in the tabloid press. Yes. So it's about taking the tough decisions to govern the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there seems to be a pattern of behaviour with the SNP with merging things. Yes. So they merge the police, this they merge the colleges. It's centralising control. This is like a sort of slight fetish yeah. with merging things. Well, it's just easier to control yeah. uh, an organisation mm -hmm. if you only have to deal with one yes. person. So they do that. Mm -hmm. And that, and it has been a colossal failure with Police Scotland. Uh -huh. Police morale is rock bottom mm -hmm. right now. I, you know, I've got friends who are cops. I meet cops on the yes. beat regularly, you know, when I'm out in the constituency. And they are just so depressed. Mm. Part of it is because they don't have the back office support that they used to have, so they have to go and do all the paperwork mm. themselves. It means they're not actually where they should be, out in the streets, helping, keeping us safe. And and things are getting missed. And you know, we we have a massive crime wave in West Edinburgh with house burglaries up through the roof mm. because the dedicated house burglary units were disbanded so that Edinburgh police could focus on the Glasgow problem of knife crime. We don't right. really have a problem with knife crime in Edinburgh, no. but because it's one target set by central police force, mm -hmm. they're generally focusing on what Strathclyde has to deal with mm -hmm. and setting the same target for everywhere else. Yes, absolutely. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Really good to meet Best you guys. Best of luck for me. Best of luck to you. Thank you very much. Cheers.